Our nightmare began November 2nd, 2016. We received a letter from Kenny Buckwater telling us that they thought that there might be a problem with uh, PFOS in the aquifer. My name is Fred Stone. I am a dairy farmer in Arundel, Maine, and this is a third generation dairy farm. Some of our cow families go back over 40 years. I never really uh, realized that PFAS existed. My name is Patrick McRoy. I am the Deputy Director at the Environmental Health Strategy Center. We've been around now for over 15 years working to try to protect people from toxic chemicals as well as promote safer alternatives. PFAS became a big story in Maine when we learned the details of what happened at Stone Ridge Farm. PFAS are a class of chemicals that are known as PBTs, which stands for persistent, bioaccumulative, and toxic. The carbon fluorine bond is one of the strongest bonds in all of chemistry, which means these chemicals don't break down. That We call them forever, forever chemicals. chemicals. They have very long half-lives in the environment, and they have long half-lives in our bodies as well. If you're exposed to a large amount of PFAS, that may be in your system for literally decades to come. They have been linked to a number of different health problems, including a couple forms of cancer, birth defects. Increased cholesterol associated with liver and thyroid damage. They can be associated with uh, some learning difficulties and other problems in kind of normal child development. Once these heavy metals and PFAS chemicals get into our bodies, they are persistent and very difficult to remove. And the idea of compromising the benefits one individual can contribute to the community over a lifetime in order to have convenience in, in packaging and wrappers um, isn't a fair trade. I wouldn't pick convenience over health any day of the week. We went to the state with this problem, not the other way around. At that time, uh, it was decided that we have two choices. First choice is to say nothing, because the state doesn't test for this. Second choice is to immediately notify the state and obviously we took a second. We had our blood test done and um, the number should be four. You, whoever else, your number should be right around four, give or take, of this contamination. My daughter is 20. My wife is 91, and my number is 111. So we're in the situation that we're in with having toxic chemicals in the environment, in our bodies, in our food supply, because we haven't had strong environmental legislation. State Representative Jessica Pay and I represent House District 66. In this past legislative session, Maine actually passed a bill to eliminate PFAS in food packaging and the governor signed a bill, and that's now the law in Maine. I was really happy to be the sponsor of LD 1433, the Safe Food Packaging Act. Essentially what the bill does is says that if you have over a billion dollars worth of sales, you can't wrap your food in packaging that has PFAS or phthalates and sell it in the state of Maine. This is a very important step, not only because food packaging can contaminate the food itself, but also because the packaging can be composted where it then ends up back onto the land to potentially contaminate crops. I am a licensed clinical social worker. I testified last spring on the PFAS legislation because I was worried about the health of my family and all the other families in the area. When we're insulted by chemicals, PFAS, lead, that kind of thing, it changes the behaviors of children and it makes us all a weaker society. There's a lot more that should be done around regulating toxic chemicals in the environment here in Maine and at the federal level. I would not wish this on my worst enemy. This has been a, a devastating nightmare all the way around, financially, uh, physically, uh, mentally. Milk our cows, do the best we can with our land, and um, just like to be left alone. And basically that's all we've ever wanted to do. 
but it seems that for whatever reason that's got to be taken away from us too.